amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the word of God today. Trust me, I wrestle with this word, Lord Jesus, so it's got to be a word in season. So I'm going to ask that you would grab your Bibles and stand to your feet, and let's turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Now, I preached from this text not too long ago, and, and then on Friday, he brought it back to me and said, tell him again. Not the same message, but the same t uh, scripture. Isaiah 43, starting at verse 15. Isaiah 43, starting at verse 15. Isaiah 43, 15. It's good to have George and Joan back in the house. Feeling better? It's good to see you in the house. I mean, Dr. Joan, Dr. Joan. I got to put that there. Amen. 43, 15, Isaiah says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again. Extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. But forget about former things. Do not dwell on the past. Let me say that one more time. Do not dwell on the past. For see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive this thing that I'm doing? For I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I am going to talk to you for the sake of a subject today on walk in your new beginning. Walk in your new beginning. Look at your name and tell them God has given you a clean slate. So don't waste it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to say that one more time. God has given each and every one of us, this is the year of new beginnings. He's given each and every one of us a clean slate. What does that mean? Anything that have happened in 2022, anything that happened in pre pre prior years or previous years, he said, I have forgiven you from that. I've delivered you from that. And I've given you another opportunity to come closer to me. I've given you another chance to draw closer to me. This new thing that God is doing in your life, don't expect things to stay the same. And don't expect business to be as usual. Hear this today. Don't be confused when your crowd shifts. Don't be alarmed and don't be caught off guard when things start to become different for you. Understand this today. It's happening because God says, I'm doing a new thing in your life because you cannot be in the old and expect to walk in the new at the same time. You cannot be in the old and expect to uh, operate and function in the new at the same time. You have to decide where you want to live. What do you want to be? What experiences do you want to have? You cannot be in Egypt and in the promised land at the same time. You have to decide. He said, now I've given you a clean slate. I've given you a clean slate. You're taking communion again today. You've been washed. You've been purified. You've been forgiven. You've been given a new opportunity, a new chance today. So do not waste it. And do not think about or live in the past. That was then and this is now. We've entered a new season, a new era, a new opportunity, a new chance, a new beginning. And God is saying, since he's allowed us to enter into this new thing that he's doing, make sure you settle within yourself that what you were accustomed to before and what you tolerated before and put up with before, you can't tolerate anymore. Hear this. You cannot tolerate and, and, and do that anymore. The things you did last year and the thoughts you had last year and the way you behaved last year and how you lived and conducted your life last year cannot be this way now. He said, I am doing a new thing. Make sure you don't allow anything or anyone to keep you bound to your past. God has said, I've delivered you. I've brought you out. I have healed you. 22 is over. And for many of us, for many people, 2022 was a rough year. 2022 was a rough year, but God allowed you to step into a new season because he's about to bring forth that which he's placed in you. I want to I say understand this, and I know all the women and the mothers especially will understand this, but when a woman is about to give birth to her baby, her surroundings have to change. Everybody can't go into the room with her. Listen. 
when she's about to deliver, when she's about to come for bring forth that which God put inside of her, she cannot be in the same surroundings. She got to get into an area that is conducive and an atmosphere that is, bring, that is ready for her to bring forth that which God has put inside of her. And for some of the people of God, God says, in order for you to walk in this new thing, some surroundings are going to have to change. Some mindsets are going to have to shift. The atmosphere is going to have to be conducive. You've got to get into an environment well, what I put inside of you can and will come forth. You have to understand this today. Because God says, I'm, I'm doing something new, but if your mind is operating in the old, you will miss this new thing that I'm doing. If I'm operating in something new, but you are focusing on what, all that you've done and you're being captive, held captive and held in bondage from what you've done before, God said, you will not experience the freedom that I'm giving you. God says, I'm going to bring about a change, Johnny. I'm going to bring you out of something, and it's not for you to worry about. It's not for you to become fearful of. This new thing I'm going to do is going to cause a shift, but it's not for you to panic. It is to put you in an atmosphere for God to bring forth that what he's going to do. When, when, uh, I will never forget when, 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 when uh, my sister, she, God bless her, so Ivory, asked me to go into the, the delivery room with her. Jesus help God Almighty. And that was the first time that I had ever, whoo, but I went in with my wife. Hallelujah. But that was the first time I'd ever been into the delivery room. And so my, wife, my sister said, I, need, I want you to go. She wasn't married, so I want you to go in the delivery room. I said, here I go. Okay. I was young. Didn't know. She shouldn't even ask me. But she said, I want you to go to the delivery room with me. I said, okay, whatever. So we, I went to the delivery room. Then, so I'm used to thought things was going to be the same as she was acting at home. You know, so that's how I thought. But then we got into the room, but they put her legs up in some boom, boom, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm like, what is happening? They said, we're putting her legs in stairs. I'm like, for what? It's what we have to position. Listen, we have to position her to get ready to deliver this baby. And God said, I'm putting some of your feet in stirrups because I'm about to deliver that which I put inside of you. And it just might be painful. You may not particularly like the position that I'm putting you in, but this is I'm doing a new thing and I'm getting you ready to bring forth that which I put inside of you. How many of you don't mind putting your feet in stirrups just to push it and just to breathe? I ain't see but one or two hands and I ain't see not one man hand, but how many of you are to put your foot in spiritual stirrups so that God can push forth that which he's put inside of you? But in that, I'll never forget they told her, you've got to breathe. Here it is. You have to learn how to breathe. And I'm putting ice chips on her lips. I'm wiping her forehead. I'm doing all those things. I didn't go to the Mars. I didn't do none of that. This was a one-day uh, uh, training. <laughs> this is a crash course. And I had to wipe her forehead, and they were telling me, and then put ice chips on her lips, whatever, and do all that kind of stuff and keep all that and all that other stuff. And I'm wiping her forehead, and they was like, uh, Miss Gates, you got to breathe now. You got to breathe. It's the thing. And the closer, listen, and the closer it got for her to deliver, she had to push longer. Listen, she couldn't give up. They said, we're going to count to 10. And they said, they would count, uh, oh, one, two. I'm like, gee, you need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten here. And they were like, one, two, three, four. All this time now, she's, she's pushing. And some of us have entered into that season where you feel like all you're doing is pushing. And God said, don't give up. You can't stop now. You cannot stop pushing. You've got to push this thing out. Some of us have been carrying babies for, a, uh, for years, waiting on this thing to deliver. Tell your neighbor, this is your season. This is your season. It is time for you to birth that which God has put on you. It is time for you to bring forth that which God has put inside of you. And it's not going to always be an easy thing to do. It's not going to be an easy thing to do, but it's a necessary thing. It's got to happen. It's got to manifest. You've got to go through this process. And so he says, you've entered into the season of new beginnings where I've given you a new chance Another opportunity for greatness to occur. So do not dwell on the past. I've given you a new thing. Former things are over. That's over. So what? You did it. 
So what they left you? So what they talked about you? So what they tried to do this and tried to do that? This is a new beginning. And God says, I've given you a clean slate. So don't waste it and do not hand it over to the devil. Hear this. We're going to get into the text. Do not waste it and do not hand it over to the devil. This thing that you're in, this season that you've entered into is a good thing. And it's important, George, that you do not quit. It's important that you do not throw in the towel. It's important that you do not say, I I'm tired. Or you got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful what you put in the atmosphere. Because for many of us, we, were, we made some mistakes. We've done some things. God said, I have forgiven you. Let that go. Forgiveness, he said, I've done that. Forget the former things. I'm doing something new in your life. I brought you from it. I delivered you of it. I've forgiven you of it. I've turned that situation around. So do not allow the devil to keep you in bondage from something that he's freed you from. Here today, do not allow the devil. I heard this years ago from Zachary Thames. He said, do not allow the devil to keep you in, in, in bondage where God has freed you from. If he's freed you, if he set you free, walk in that. If he's hold you captive, he said, I've already opened the gate for you to be free. I've already forgiven you. I've already set some things in course. I've already set some things in motion. And if I've done it before, I can do it again. And in our text, the Lord was telling the Israelites in verse 15. He says, I am the Lord, your holy one, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew on the chariots, out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished and snuffed out like a wick. Some of us get so used to God performing in a certain way that we miss what he's about to do. We get so accustomed to how he came through before that when he shows us his wonder working power, but he sends it from another direction or through another source. We tend to think it's not God. And God said, I'm doing a new thing. You used to me coming this direction or me operating through that way or through that person. We cannot miss our new beginning season because our, our mindset refuses to shift or to change. Do not miss your new beginning season by looking at how it's always be done. God says, I am doing a new thing. And the way that you came out the last time is not the way that I'm going to bring you out this time. See, before, he said, God let the people, it, when he read them out, he led them to the Red Sea. You know this story. When he led them out of Egypt, he led them to the Red Sea. And when they got there, they didn't know what to do. But he pushed the waters back. You remember that? He pushed the waters back and he told them, now cross over on dry ground and I will take care of your enemies that come after you. See, God pushed the waters back and said, now cross because I've made a way for you. But then he says, but don't get used to me providing for you in that way. Hear this. That was the way I delivered you, for, delivered you uh, through, your, through, your, through your promise before. But this time, I'm not making a way through the waters. The text says, 19, for I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I'm making a way not through the waters. I'm making a way through what? The wilderness. It is. Yeah, I'm doing a new thing. Before he held the waters back for them to cross over into their promised land in order for them to get the victory. But in the wilderness, things were going to be different. They were not going to need to be walking through the water. They were going to need the water. Here it is. They were going to need it. So understand this. So he had to provide for them in another way. Listen, for what God is about to do, what he held back before in one season is about to be what provides for you in this season. And when you read verses 15 through 16, 17, he said he held back the water for them to cross over. You know that. But then he said, I did that then. But then he gets to 19, he said, I'm doing a new thing. And he said, I'm providing water and, and streams in the wasteland. I held it back in your last season. This time you're going to need it in this season. I'm not holding it back. I'm going to cause it to come from the ground. But if you get caught up into the way he did it before, in the way that he caught and, and brought you through before, you're going to miss what he's doing now. Listen, listen, listen. He led them to the Red Sea. They saw the water. 
on the second go round, they were sitting there in the wilderness and God caused the water to come to them. Listen, because some of us are going to go, miss this new season. Because you're looking at from this direction because God says, because you're saying, Lord God, I need you to provide for me. And God said, I, but I'm coming from the east. You expected me to come from the west because that's the way I've always come through for you. I've always had that person. I've always had that promotion for you. This time, I'm not giving you the promotion through that individual. It's going to come from another direction. I'm not going to heal your marriage the way that I healed it before. I'm not going to go through that route. I'm not going to bring your children. I'm not going to have your children where they got to call you. You got to step out and call them this time. Mm. That's an ouch right there for somebody. And some of us get so caught up and we miss God. Because we say, God, I want you. Um, I thought you were going to come this way. God said, did I not tell you this is a new beginning? Did I not tell you this is a new season? This is a new opportunity, and I'm doing a new thing. The former things, the way I used to do, is over. That's not happening, Carlos, this time. That person who, uh, uh, stop looking for that person to validate you. Stop looking for, you always wait on that person. You're looking for their nod. You're looking for them to stamp you with their approval and their affirmation, and it ain't happening, so now you're second-guessing who you are. Because I'm not used to your neighbor sitting right next to you and told you, you look good. God got the favor on you. But you're waiting for it to come from this person. And since it didn't come from this person, now you, you don't believe it because it came from this person. God said, I'm doing a new thing. I shut up the mouth of that person who gave you your last accolade. And if you sit there and wait on them, you're going to miss this next wave that I have for you. Because I'm sending it from strangers. I got people in position waiting, but you got to get in position. You got to put your feet in stirrups. You got to get yourself in position. Change your mindset of thinking that they have to be the one. That this has to be the way. This got to be done this way. And if it's not done this way, how many people are stuck in their way? If it ain't done my way, you can't see it can't be done another way. You can't see it can be done. It's always got to be this way. There's more ways for God to bless you than just through this source. i never forget years ago when the, the, the church was taking a cruise. We went to Miami and we had the, 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 the charter bus. And the charter bus driver took a route to get on uh, 528 or whatever. No, we weren't going to be going to uh, Port Canaveral. We were going to put Port Canaveral, but they were expecting him to go a certain way. And then when he took a detour and went another way, they were all on the bus talking about, which way he going? He'll know where he going. It's more than one way to get to Port Canaveral from Claremont. But the moment he didn't make the turn, they thought he should have made. They started murmuring, complaining. He don't know where he going. Pastor, this trust driver don't know. Did you tell him we going to Port Canaveral? Yes, I did. This man got the route. But they were accustomed to going to Port Canaveral their way. And when someone made a detour, they were going to miss the ship because they didn't want to go the way the bus driver. And some of us jumped ship because it didn't happen your way. If you would have got off that bus, you sure enough would have missed it. We all would have been on the other side waving at you. So long, bye-bye. Because we are accustomed to one thing, and some of us have our mindset blocked and locked in place where we can't deviate. And we have it where it's like this. We have tunnel vision, and if, if, it, if it goes outside the way we think, it rattles us. It causes us to ponder and wonder and pace. And God says, I'm doing a new thing. And if you don't learn to shift with me, you will miss it. We've got to learn to shift and go with God. It's not going to always be an easy task, especially if you like to be the one in control all the time. If you're a control freak, ooh, you're in trouble. If you're one of those who always got to, it's got to be your way. If you're one of those individuals who don't like change, let me tell you right now, you're in for a rude awakening. Because God says, I'm doing a new thing. In order for you to roll with me and rock with me and receive that which I have for you, I'm not going to do it your way. He says, forget the form of things. He said, for I, not you, I'm doing a new thing. 
How many of you want to receive this new thing that God has for you? How many of you want to be in position? Tell your neighbor, I refuse to miss it. I refuse to miss it. Come on, confess that. Put it out there. Tell them, I refuse to miss it. I'm not missing one blessing, one thing. Not, I'm not missing. Hear this. I'm not missing one thing. So he told me, I'm doing a new thing for you. And that, the way I did it for you back when you left Egypt, is not the way I'm going to do it for you in this wilderness. And they were the same group of people. Hear this now. The same group of people, but God, God came from a different way. He was telling them that which I used before to kill your enemies in that last season is what I'm providing for you so you can survive in this season. In other words, I may not get rid of your enemies. Here it is. You may just be right there. Last time I wiped them out if they came after you. Last time if they rose up against you, I was going to let you see me swallow them. This time they just may make it through on the other side with you. How are you going to handle it? You got to tell yourself, if God is with me, it doesn't matter who comes against me. If God brought me through it, no matter how he brings me, as long as I know I'm in his hands, I know that everything is going to be all right. You've got to just, just make that determination. As long as my hand is in God's hand, as long as my life is in God's hand, it doesn't matter how many enemies chase me, I got the winning ticket already on my side. You got to understand this and believe this and receive this today. Because oftentimes we get stuck and God said, I'm coming, from, I'm coming from another way, Geneva. Minister Geneva, I'm coming from a different route. And you're waiting on me, Beverly. And said, you're waiting on me, Yvette, to come from this way. You're praying to me, and I got the answer, but you're looking at it from this perspective. And some of us, even we, uh, in the first week of the fast, God has heard the prayer. He's delivering, but you're looking at it this way. And God says, open your spirit up to me. Open your mind up to me and say, Lord God, have your way. However you want to bless me, bless me. However you want to do it for me, do it for me. Last time you held back the waters, this time you're not going to hold it back. It's going to spring up. In places, here it is. He says, and, and, and I am making a way in wilderness and stream in wasteland. He said, I'm doing things that it, it shouldn't even be done that way. I'm, do, I'm creating a road where it shouldn't be a road. I am doing a new thing. And all of us who are in position and all of us who are ready for this new thing, God said, I'll do it. If you just open up your mindset and come from the days of old, come from how I used to do it. Some of us are ticked off with our spouses because we thought they were going to do this or do that. We want them to do it this way. You match your children because you want them to operate in this particular business, but they want to get their own degree and do something else. You said, I want you to do this. Well, you should have done it. You should have done that. I try, never try to force my kids to do anything. You make the decision because it's your life. Now you just better be ready for the consequences. Because with every decision comes a consequence. With every decision you make comes a consequence. So you be careful and make sure you make the right decision. But you have to let my kids fall. I don't like to see my kids hurt. But sometimes you got to let them hurt so they can begin to look to the Lord. And call out to the Lord. Some of us wouldn't be where we are right now if we didn't have some pain that drew us closer to God. Where are those who pain pushed you to Jesus? And so I didn't want my kids to go through nothing. I was like, uh-uh, I'll tell them if I tell uh-uh. We can solve it, let's solve it. If we can fix it, let's fix it. If we can deliver, let's deliver on it. If we can provide, let's provide. Whatever they need, let's do it. And I'll never hear God say, listen, you are not Jehovah Jireh. You are not. And I kept saying, God, but these my babies, as if they weren't his. And God had to spank me, and you don't like the spankings from God. He had to spank me and said, pray over them, but they are not going to make every decision that you want them to make. You can't be ticked off because they didn't do it your way. I'm speaking to them just like I'm speaking to you. They praying to me, they talking to me, they lifting up my name, they glorifying me. They're in their 20s, almost 30 years old. Let them live the life I called them to live. So what? They don't want to operate in church. So what? They don't want to operate in the funeral business. So what? You better let them live because I put a calling on their life. But y'all think twice for y'all say no. Ha! Hear me, hear me, hear me. 
And oftentimes we get so caught up into what we want. God said, I'm doing something new. How many of you like me? Some things you got to let go. How many of you like me? Some things you got to let go. Some situations you got to say, Lord, I don't want to. Wave your hand. Lord, I don't want to. It's a scary thing. Amen. We're truth tellers. We're those who are going to be honest. Lord, I don't really want to do it this way. Lord God, I thought it was going to happen this way. And Lord God, I'm used to it happening this way. And I'm, 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 I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm scared because I don't know where are those. I don't know how you, I know you're going to do it. I just don't know how you're going to do it. I trust you, but it's that 1% of doubt. Mm. And God says, you're going to have to trust me in this new season. In this new beginning, this new opportunity that I have presented you with, I didn't have to allow you to come in 2023. I didn't bring you into 2023 to worry your life to death. For you to be stressing over things that you can't change. I brought you into this year for you to worship me and praise me and trust that I got you even when you can't receive the end of it. He said, I'm doing a new thing. And I love the fact that he said, shall you not perceive it? Do you not perceive it? That's the question mark. In other words, do you not see what I'm doing? See that I'm the same God that provided for you last time. I'm just coming a different route. If I brought you out the last time, I could bring you out this time. I'm just not coming through a, 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 a Groveland. I got somebody in Africa who's going to put your face in their dream and they're going to find you from somewhere, but you're looking from somebody in your neighborhood. You waiting on that family member to come to your rescue. You wait for that person, that counselor, that individual to say something to give you some type of affirmation and confirmation. And they ain't saying nothing. Now you ticked off. Not understanding God has silenced them and put them on mute because he got another route he's coming. That's why you just have to tell God every day, Lord, God, speak to me however. You want to speak to me. Someone asked me this week over where I am every day, and they asked me, said, do you believe God can do this? Do you believe that God can speak to this? Or God can? I said, I believe God can. This is why you believe that. I said, because God, if God can use a donkey, <laughs> if God can use a donkey, he'll use anybody. And you wait on to come from this person. People used to keep me, I'm, wait, I'm waiting to get this back in the years. I'm waiting to get to a Benny Hinn conference. For what? I'm, I need deliverance. <laughs> You waiting to get to a Benny Hinn come for him to lay hands on you? You're crazy? <laughs> What's the problem? They were waiting on an individual. God said, I got deliverance from you right now. Lay hands on yourself. Look in the mirror. Anoint yourself. Plead the blood of Jesus. You ain't got to run in no Benny Hinn conference. You right here buying water from somebody. They put a commercial. Y'all remember? Some of y'all bought the water. Keep looking at me. And you buying water and buying handkerchiefs from people and you buying water. They want number tap water, but they said they got it from the Holy Land and you bought it for $25 plus shipping and handling. <laughs> and we get so wrapped up, we get so desperate for God to move. And God said, if you would just trust me, I'm the same God who can move through Benny Hinn. I'm the same God, is the same God who you trying to buy this oil for him. I'm the same one who can deliver you and set you free. Call out to me and trust me. I'm the Alpha and Omega. You don't need anybody. Last time, the, Egypt, the Egyptian, they needed Moses to lead them to the water. And then he left in the water. He told them, now put, it in the, put, the, put the stick in the water for me to divide it. This time, you're not going to need a Moses. You just got to be in the place where I want you to be. And I will provide water for you right where you are. Hear this. He said, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. He said, I held it back this time. This time, I'm not, not going to lead you to the water. I'm going to bring the water to you. Oh, y'all better receive that. His last time you had, I had to take you to the water. This time, right in your situation, right what you're dealing with, I'm going to bring the refreshing, the renewal, the Holy Spirit, which represents the water. I'm going to bring it right there to you. But if you're waiting on me to take you somewhere, you will miss what I'm doing right there in your presence. I provided for you everything you need. I'm not leading you to the water. I'm bringing the water right where you are. But if you never learn to appreciate right where you are and thank me right where you are and sit in right where you are, you will miss the place that I have for you. Because you feel like God got to do something. Lead me, take me. To God said, yes, yeah, but that was then. 
I took you right to the Red Sea and I caused it to open and I killed your enemies. This time, right where you are, I'm bringing the water to you. And we got to be in position to receive the things that God has for us. He's just a new beginning, new season, new opportunity, a new chance. Don't get locked into your old ways. Don't get locked into your old methods and the way you used to do things and the way how you used to operate. That was then. God says, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not see what I'm doing? I'm the one who said, I never leave you or forsake you, he says. And I got you right there, Rosa. But some of us can't shift. Our mindset is calloused. And we can't seem to shift from the way, like, God, I'm used to you. I need you to speak to me. He ain't speaking to you from that same book, that same text, that same scripture. You got to go deeper now. You used to him coming to you. I need Genesis. Because he came to you and revealed something to you from Genesis the last time. This time it's going to be over in Obadiah. And you know that's rarely you go to. He said, what I got for you in this next season, you got it, it, the, the, the deliverance is in Obadiah. That's the scripture that's going to give you nourishment. That's the scripture. I'm not saying that's what it is, so don't go look in your table of contents looking for Obadiah. I'm just using that. Because you're going to be sitting there saying, Pastor said that next season is I got to go to Obadiah. And it may not be Obadiah for you. It may be Exodus or something. I don't know. But you're sitting there saying, it didn't come through Obadiah, Pastor. And I'm ticked off with God. I've been reading Obadiah. But we have to understand, God says, I can come. Don't block me in. Don't block me in to that way. How many of you are open to the new things of God? Be, be careful when you answer this because he's going to test you. How many of you are open to the new things? L- lift them high because some of y'all are faking it. Well, uh-uh. Lift them, Carlos, lift them higher. I know your hand go higher than that. <laughs> see, some of us want to play it safe. Huh? <laughs> he came to see. How many of you really believe you're you you ready for this new thing? Amen. Now, 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 with that new thing, it, it comes change. Yes. With this new season, this new beginning, comes change, comes shifts. And so we have to tell the Lord, Lord, now that I know that you have some new things for me, now that I'm ready for the new things, now that you've allowed me to enter into this new beginning, I'm ready for it. And however you want to give it, however you want to provide it, however you want to deliver it, I'm just ready for it. I'm not going to box you in. I'm just, every day I wake up, I say, Lord God, however you want to do it, let's do this. This is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And my only requirement, Lord God, is to trust you. My only requirement is to lift up your name and glorify you. I am not going to get caught up if my boss don't, look, don't give me the promotion, but give it to my neighbor. Because I, some of us get ticked off. I can't believe. Some of us get ticked when somebody don't speak. Come from that mindset. Come from that. That thing will kill your next season. Because you ticked off at somebody who won't even study you. They got something on their mind, but they look right. You felt they look right at me. And then said, well, they didn't even see you. They had their eyes open, but they got stuff going on. And we get so ticked off, and now it messed up our whole day over somebody you thought saw you. And God said, you don't need that validation. My hand is on you. Hear this, believers. I don't want us to miss this next season. This is, the, this is the first week of a new year. Let's receive our clean slate. Let's walk in this new beginning. Get your, 20, get, get, uh, 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 your decrees and, 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 and declarations. Recite those things. Put it in the atmosphere and say it with some boldness and some confidence. Believe it's going to be done. See yourself coming out of it. See yourself already entered into it. See yourself already in the promised land. You got to see yourself that way. You've got to see it. You've got to develop spiritual eyes to see. If you don't, and you always operate when you got to see in the natural, and you can't develop what God is doing, although you can't tangibly touch it, you're going to miss it. God said, You got to believe it's already in the works. You got to believe that the moment you heard it, the moment you spoke it, I started, I started operating. The moment you came to me and prayed to me was the moment I released the angels. Hear this, believers. Don't just sit up in somebody's church. I don't care if it's here or not for visitors. Don't just sit there and walk back out the same way. Believe that God spoke a word and ready for you to grow and change and receive that which he has for you. 2023 is a good year already. I don't care what 
kicked off in the last eight days. You better prophesy and say 2023 is already a good year. It's going to continue to be a good year. God already opened doors to me. He's already blessed me. He's already favored me. You alive and well. You, many, you know how many people we buried just in the last seven days? You are still above ground. You better tell God, thank you. He's already provided a miracle. He's already done it. And so he tells us, he says, I'm doing a new thing. And some of us will miss it. Some of us, will mi unfortunately, will miss this new thing because you're looking for him to operate from a, one direction. And he said, I'm not doing it that way. You've got to be ready, Elder Deacon, Elder Floyd. You've got to be ready. Do you perceive it? He said, I'm the one who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army of the reinforcements together, and they lay their dead. I took care of your enemies, Andre. I took care of them. This time I may not take care of them, but you got to know I'm still with you. I took care of them. You saw me swallow them up. You saw me when you put the stick in, you saw dry ground. And I held back, well, I, ain't do, I ain't doing it that way now. I may, I may not. I may not do it that way. Your enemies may be on your heel, and you just might, they may walk into the promised land with you. They may just be right over there, right there with you, but you've got to believe that I got the best for you. He said, you've seen me, uh, Minister Cox, close some doors from your past. You've seen me, Miss Patrick, keep you safe from your enemies. You've seen me, Georgia, part some waters and move back that which you, that you thought I couldn't do. But how I many, I love the fact when God was in my office yesterday and God said, Every, think about this. Sitting at my desk. He says, I can do whatever I want to do. Nothing is more powerful than me. I'm in the hallway back there thinking and walking and praying and pacing and thanking him. He says, nothing is too difficult for me. I don't care how high it looks to you or how low or how wide or broad it may seem, I can still move mountains. I can do whatever I want. The thing is, Everett, you got to trust me to do it. And you got to see it already removed. See, that, that means just, I, I love when I'm, I have that time to myself. I'm in the hallway just thinking because I can visualize it. I can see that thing coming down. I can see the advancement. I can see the growth. And all I'm able to do is just say, Lord, thank you. There used to be where I used to try to figure it out. Anybody, figure, anybody like to figure things out? You got plan A and plan B and C. Anybody where though? What are the planners? Yeah. Back in the day, back in school, they should tell you, write your five-year goal. Write your 10-year. And, and I'm sitting there writing, and, 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 and that's good. Have a plan. Have the plan. Write your five years. Write your ten years. But God said, don't just bound bind me to that because I can deviate from that and catapult you that you and skip two years of that and I can still get you there. Have the plan, but don't box God in that. Just say, Lord God, lead me and guide me. You, you, this is my life. My life is in your hands. However you want to do it, however you choose to do it, I, I surrender to your will. I surrender to your way. I, I sometimes it's scary because I don't know how God going to do it. But God said, did have I left you before? Hello? Never. Have I left you before? And most, if not all of our answers is no, he's never. How many of you can testify that? That the Lord, be honest with him. How many, let me ask this. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. How many of you all can say God left me in that situation? He left me high and dry. And I didn't know how it was going to come through. He didn't come through for me, and he left me high and dry. Anybody? Amen. He left. Be honest. He left you high and dry. And then what did you do? I'm glad you're in church today. But you, you were like, Lord, I'm ticked off. Be honest, because I know you. I'm ticked off. Because I was expecting God to come through this way. And he didn't come when I needed him. But it's a true statement when he says, but he's right on time. Can you testify to that one? Yeah. Amen. He's right on time. And so what, 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 what the enemy trying to do and tell us is he didn't come through. I was watching something the other day and, and the pastor was saying, sometimes you got to sit in that thing that you're going through. And sometimes as a pastor and for some of you as leaders and just, just, just people. And I was looking at it. I'm like, Lord, this is just a confirmation, a revelation, an affirmation, everything else. Because sometimes you got to sit in something you're going through. And God said, I ain't going to move it. Sit in it. But trust me that I'm going to bring you through it. 
Trust me, I'm going to bring you through it. And I'm sitting like, Lord God, but the, I, I, need, I, I just needed to hear that. Didn't know I needed it. Was, it was bringing, listen, he was bringing water right to where I was. Right to where I was. And I just needed that, 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 that the scent, the scent of water. The scent, I just needed to, the scent of it. And that one little statement brought the scent that gave me what, that one little statement was what I needed to just get back up and say, woo, I may have to sit in it, but I know God going to bring me through. It's only a matter of time. How many of you sitting in something right now and God said, you got to trust me, I'm going to bring you through it. Oh God. And I just needed that scent. And he said, I'm providing, I'm providing uh, uh, water and streams in wasteland. Right where you are, I'm bringing to you. You ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to stress about it. I know what you have need of. And I know when you need it. I, I wasn't even looking at the TV. I wasn't even looking at the TV. I just got home from work. And my wife had it on. And I came in the house like, oh, I don't want no noise. How many of you have been there before? You come off work like, I don't want no noise. And she got the TV on 100, blasting. I'm like, let me get back in the car and just ride up and down 27. And I walk in the car. It was just a, a rough day at work. And I get home like, Lord Jesus. And first thing I hear, the pastor, he's loud. And the TV, ble- and my wife just sitting there. <laughs> and I'm in there like, <sighs> and I heard the Holy Ghost. T- I heard him as plain as they tell me, chill out. Chill out. Don't leave and go nowhere. Sit right here. I went and got in the shower, sat in the bed, I'm listening to him. Like, at first I started with an attitude. <laughs> and I'm like, what they finna say? And I'm sitting there looking at him. And I'm being honest with you. And I'm sitting looking at TV like. And my wife's sitting there, yeah, she writing notes. Hey, Amen. I'm sitting there like, I'm ticked off with her for writing notes. Like, I dare you. Do you not see I need you right now? I need attention. I need a hug. I need something from you. And you look at this pastor on TV. <laughs> and I'm sitting there on the bed. And about 15 minutes in, he sat there and said something. Like, and God said, I, I felt the prick in my spirit. You better listen. And I'm sitting like, okay. And this, this, give me tea, give me tea. This, she says, you want me to turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> I said, girl, you better leave that TV alone. So I was trying to act all hard at first. You know, like, <sighs> and she said, you want me to turn it off? I said, no, I'm good. You still trying to have a little pride. Get the pride. No, I'm good. And once they turned up a little bit more, I don't want to miss nothing. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there. Where are those being truthful? Where are those? Some of the, you're like that sometimes. You're like, pride sometimes gets you. God said, pride comes to a fall. You know you need this word. And I'm sitting there, and the, he kept talking and kept talking. And it got to that point where he said, and some of you are going through something. You got to sit in it. But you got to trust that God at the appointed time, he knows exactly. You still got to preach your way through it. You still got to teach your way through it. You still got to love your way through it. You still got to smile your way through it. You still got to have joy through your way through it. You got to trust that I'm with you even in it. And I sat there, I said, uh, Hello. I was like, Lord, thank you. I needed that. That was the water I needed. To, I wasn't waiting on y'all, thank God, because y'all sucking life. Y'all weren't giving water. And I was like, Lord God, thank you, Jesus. And, and it got, got the wheels turning again. I could think, I could think positive. I, I saw hope again. I saw life. I saw joy. I could feel it on the inside. I didn't have to hear nothing else in the message because I got what I needed. I was like, Lord God, I thank you for being good to me. I thank you for loving me because when I didn't want to even hear it, you brought the water to me. And some of us were missing because just like I was about to. Because we don't want to do something. We don't want to hear something. We don't want to be there. We don't wanna, and God said, that's where the water is. And I was about to turn deaf ear to who God was using to bring me the water. And some of us have turned deaf ear. We don't want to hear something. We don't want to be in a place. We're tired of this and we're tired of hearing that. And, we're tired. and God said, it is in that next statement is where your water is going to be. But if you shut me down and cut me off and wipe me out, you'll miss it. And that which I have for you in this season, you're going to need that to get your strength back. You're going to need that to get your muscles back. You're going to need that to get that smile back. You're going to need that to get that hope back. That's what you're going to need. God said, I'm doing a new thing. Yes. You've entered into a new season. Some of us are stuck. Oh, shataya, bullshit. Rosa, 
Hallelujah. You got to come from whatever. You got to come from that old mindset. You got to come from your childhood. You got to come from whatever is holding you back. God got something better for you on the other side of it. But you got to let that go. 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 And not just Rosa, but he pointed her out to me and put her face big and right here. Others, we got to let some stuff go in order to walk in the new beginning that God has for us. Because if you want to receive this new thing, the former things are over. And the way I used to do it and the way I came for you before is over. I'm doing something new. But you got to get in position. Put your foot up in the stirrups. You know the pain was coming. Ah. I heard somebody say the other day, the moment you take your first breath is the moment you start dying. Like, good Lord, can they live first? They said, the moment you take your first breath is the moment you start. And so the moment, the moment you accepted Jesus, God said, I put a purpose, a plan. I got my hands on you. So you already know eventually your foot going to have to get up some stirrups. Because it ain't going to always be roses. It ain't going to always be that way. But we got to trust that our God is with us. We got to trust our God is for us. How many of you believe that today? He says, you have a new beginning for you. This is a new season for you, Brenton. You got to believe that thing. And I don't care how it looks in the natural. These Israelites didn't have a clue. They didn't even know how it was going to be done. Because they were used to coming when they came out of Egypt. He said, listen, we got to be careful how we judge people and look at people in one season. Because just because they were in that season then don't mean they're going to always be in that season. You got to understand this. Because Joseph was one day he was in the pit, the next day he was in the palace. You got to understand that Mordecai, one day he was sitting outside the palace, the next day he's sitting in the palace. You got to understand this. God, he can use people. Uh, uh, Ruth, Ruth was sitting one day working in the field, the next day she owned the field. You got God can change in different things. You got to be ready for the shift and the change that he's doing. But some of us get locked in one thing. I said, I'm opening some doors for you. I'm making a way for you in the desert where there shouldn't be any water, where there shouldn't be any streams. In, in, in dry places, I'm about to make it moist for you. Where there was once you didn't even think there could be life, I'm about to put life there. But you got to believe it. You got to receive it. I can preach it all day. I got my scent back, but now you got to get it. Because some of us walked here on our last leg on the eighth day of a new year. And like, Lord God, I need to see you move. Where are those? I need, uh, Jesus, amen. Where, lift, lift them high. Lord, I need to see you move. I got to feel you move. I need an answer. I need a right now miracle. I need it. And God said, I ain't left you. I have not left you. Keep decreeing a thing. Keep believing a thing. He said, it is yours for the asking. Once you make the decree, it should be established unto you. Ask yourself the question, what are you putting out there? What are you putting out there? Are you putting out, out there that you're worried or are you putting out there you're more than a conqueror? Are you putting out there, Lord God, I don't know how you're going to do it? Or are you putting out there, Lord, I thank you for making a way? What are you putting out there? You may not see it now, but do you want to see it? If you want to see it, speak what you want to see. Decree what you want to see. Yes, you're going to have a season. You're going to have a moment just like the Israelites. You're going to have a moment like, Lord God. And God said, I know where I'm leading you. Last time I led you to where I was going to set you free. This time I got you in the wilderness. Some of us are having a wilderness experience. You're having a wilderness experience. Amen. Amen. You're having a wilderness experience. And you say, Lord God, I need to see you in this matter. And God said, I'm going to bring the water to you. You ain't got to get up. And fight for it and run to it and run it from your enemies and trying to figure out they're going to catch you. I'm going to bring the blessing to you. But you have to be ready for it. Ready for it. It ain't going to come the same way, Raven. It's not coming the same way, Vanessa. Let that go. They say, Lord, however you want to move in my life. I stand in position to ready for you to move. I ain't going to second guess you. I ain't going to question you. And I'm not going to worry about it. No more. 
This is a new season. This is a new season, a new time. My wife, I tell you the other day, I was struggling. I was like, I feel the Lord telling me this. I feel the Lord telling me that. I don't know which, I don't know which way he's leading me. And he led me here. He said, tell him again to walk in their new beginning. Live in your new beginning. Act like I have given you a new start. Act like I've given you a clean slate. Walk like you've been replenished. Walk like you've been renewed. Walk like you've been revived. Hold your head up and tell the devil he lost again. You got to believe that young lady right here. I don't even know right here. You, you, yeah, smiling right now. You, lift your hands. Lift your hands. You, you have so much going. You have, lift, lift, lift the hands, all, both, both of them. You have so much on your mind. And you always got to figure it out. And people always look to you to have the answer. Because you're used to being the one that's going to fix it, handle it. And God said, give it to him. Because if you don't give it to him. It's going to kill you. You cannot carry the weight. You're going to have to look to the hills and which cometh your help, knowing your help comes from the Lord. He knows what you have need of. You needed a word today. And God spoke. God spoke to you, singled you out, and said, he got you. But you're going to have to trust him. Never seen your day before in my life. God says, he heard your prayer. And you're going to have to trust him. He got you. Whatever it is you're going through, give it to him. He got this, and I promise you, bring us back the testimony. I don't care if you got to write it. I don't know where you live. I don't know if you live here. Bring the testimony back here. And if God can do it for her, how many of you believe he can do it for you? He said, you've entered to a new season, a new beginning. A new beginning. And I know you may not see how this going to line up. You don't know how it's going to be fixed or if it's going to be fixed. I said, ride out with me. Ride this thing out with me. If you really do want to see it, then see it. If you really want to see it, visualize it. See yourself on the other side of that mountain. See that thing coming down. See your blessing. See it. I don't care how dim it may be. I don't care how cloudy it may look. You better see yourself on the other side of it. Put that vision there and see yourself as more than a conqueror. See yourself healed, Sharon. See it. We've got to. We've got to. He said, this is a new beginning. And I've cleaned your slate. I don't care what happened in 2022. That was then. And I, don't you dare take my days for granted. I bless you to see another day. I bless you to have another moment. I've given you another chance. You better not let the devil snatch it. This is your day. This is your season. This is your time. You better walk in. Somebody say, this is my season. i almost knock your chest out. This is my season. This is my time. This is a new beginning for me. I am walking on a clean slate. And what God has for me, I shall receive it. And he can do it however he wants to do it. Whoever he wants to do it through. I'm just in position to receive it because I believe it in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you really believe that, give God some glory. Give God some honor. Give God some praise right where you are. He said, I bring the water to you. You ain't got to stress about it no more. I bring it to you. Let that go. Let that go. Let that go. Somebody better give God the best praise you can. And you have to say, Lord God, here I am. Bless me. Here I am. I'm ready to be promoted. I'm ready to be redeemed. I'm ready to be forgiven. I'm ready to be healed. I'm ready to be set free. However you want to do it, God, do it. I'm in position. My foot are in stirrups. I'm ready to push forth, bring forth that which you have for me. Where are those who are ready? Where are those who got eyes to see? Where are those who got eyes to see? Where are those who got eyes to see? Lift your hands to Jesus. Lift those hands to Jesus. Lift those hands to Jesus. You got to see yourself on the other side. We don't just sing the song. You got to see yourself on the other side of this. See yourself coming out of it. I don't care how hard it has been. That was then. This is now. And some of us need to just close our eyes for a moment and see yourself on the other side of it. See yourself. I mean, you got to really, some of us got to push through some junk. 
You got to push through some generational things that have been sitting there. You got to push through some words that have been spoken that were not of God. You got to push through something that's some, some rejection. You got to push through some neglect. You got to push through some, some, some lonely days, some lonely periods. You've been looking for such and such to be there for you and they were never there. And now you mad because they weren't there for you. And God said, I've been there all along. You sitting there looking for A, B, and C, and I'm already there. Some of us need to just tell God, thank you, because you've been looking for, for provision from some flesh. And you've been looking for somebody to validate you and affirm you. You've been looking for that. God says, I may not send anyone. You're going to have to know that I am there with you. Spend some time with me. Lift those hands to Jesus. Talk to him. He said, this is a new beginning, a new season, a new moment, a new opportunity, a clean slate. I lift my own hands and just telling God, I thank you. I thank you. I worship you, oh God. I'm not worrying. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I'm not worrying. I'm not stressing. I'm not fretting. I'm not doubting. I'm not fearful. I'm not none of that no more. I'm prosperous. Put in the atmosphere. I'm prosperous. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm spirit filled. I'm blessed in my going, in my coming, in the city, in the field. Lord God, those who I come into contact with, I got favor with them. I got favor with you. I got favor with creditors, bankers. I got favor. I walk in abundance. I walk in glory. I walk in strength i walk in power i walk in confidence i live in peace i live in joy i live in hope you got to put in the atmosphere and watch god and just thank him for putting for making it come to pass what are you putting out there what are you putting out there how do you want to live your life how do you how do you want your life to be see it as that way see it that way i'm not talking about just financially i'm talking about living in peace because some of us got chaos in the brain some of us are living in chaos in the mind. Tell you, tell God, Lord God, give me a new mindset. I stand in position to receive a new mindset. I'm not thinking waywardly. I'm not going to let my childhood pain go so I can live freely as an adult in the blessings of the promises. Because some of us have carried over some childhood pain. Carried over. We brought into a new year some things that happened in the 60s and the 50s and the 40s. In the 70s, and the 80s, and the 90s. God said, well, was I not there? Was I not there with you? You were waiting on JoJo. You were waiting on them to help you. And I'm the one who brought you through. And you mad at JoJo? And I brought you through. I kept you. You're still alive. And not crazy because of my grace. And because of my mercy. And here I have allowed you to enter into a new beginning. Every day, I don't care if it's August, you tell yourself, this is the year of new beginnings. I don't care if it's December 31st, 2023. It's the year of new beginnings. And I'm waiting on God to move mightily. I'm trusting God that he's going to do it. And every day, put it out there. Take those decrees. Declare it. And watch God. How many are you ready to be who God called you to be? How many are you ready for the new season? How many are you ready for this new moment? Kathy, walk in that thing, girl. Walk in that. Let that go. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. It's been tough. Jesus. Jesus. And you're sitting in it. And you're saying, Lord, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm done. I've done all I know to do. And I'm spit out with strength, financially, mentally, emotionally. I am spent. Come, come to come to the altar, Kathy. Go to Bushata. Oh, he's 